folks, you're gonna start seeing the benchmarks roll out this week. You've probably read about it in a newsletter in SugarWad, and I just wanna take a bit of time to explain some of the stuff. Now, there's gonna be categories for every benchmark. There's gonna be things for strength, both with equipment and then body weight. There's gonna be things for cardiovascular, both standalone, like run, bike, and then also conditioning, so like CrossFit things where there's movements mixed together. There will also be skill, so you have a measurement over the course of time for things like double unders, toes to bar, et cetera, et cetera. Now, within those, there are going to be some things that have levels. For example, if you can do X amount on this first level of a given test, if you will, then you're allowed to do the next one. If you can do this, you're allowed to do the next one so that you're not stuck doing something that's very simple for your ability. We actually have one of those with the upper body pushing. It's real simple. It starts with push-ups. If you can do that, you move to handstands, so on and so forth. So some have levels. There's also gonna be at least one conditioning test that has levels. In the event you can do the uh, workout in a certain amount of time, you get to move to the next level of the workout, which is a little bit more challenging. And the reason for this is that over time, we don't want people continuously testing something that just seems really easy or below their current ability. We want everyone to always be challenged. Now with things like a strength test or a cardiovascular piece, there typically aren't levels because you just keep getting stronger and lifting more, or you keep getting faster and more conditioned and you just go faster on that. Now, one other category I wanna to briefly touch on is when you see lifestyle and performance. Now, do not get these confused with fitness and RX, although they might seem similar. Lifestyle is gonna be more along the lines of, I wanna come into the gym, I wanna work out, I wanna know that my body is getting stronger and fitter, and I'm just doing this for my health, for my longevity, for my kids, for my recreational hobbies. And I don't really care about maximum performance and just like eking out every ounce of fitness I can and being the best I can possibly be. That's not really of your concern. So at that rate, the lifestyle option is typically gonna have you performing multiple reps of a heavy weight, which is gonna be a little bit more suitable to doing things out in the real world and there's a lot less risk because you're not loading up a maximal amount of weight on the bar. Now, if you do love chasing the performance, if you want to go as hard as you can, you wanna get every pound of weight possible on the bar, and you wanna maybe even compete with your peers, then you would choose the performance option. Performance meaning, yes, I'm treating this more than just me being fit and healthy, and I'm almost seeing it as like a sport, a activity that I want to compete in, and I wanna eke out every ounce of performance that I can get. And knowing that there's a little bit of a risk, say going for a one rep max deadlift or back squat or power clean or something like that. So definitely more risk when doing the performance, but that's really what some people love and want and it's a lot of fun for them. And then there's a little bit more safety going for the lifestyle and it's just enough to give people a progress measure point over time to let them know that yes, they are still getting stronger. All right, guys, I'm really excited about this. This is a six month thing where they're just gonna be kind of sprinkled in. There's a lot more detail to the structure. I'll be sharing that because I know some of you really wanna know that and geek out on it. I'll also hopefully be sending out a PDF that shows the year-long calendar so you can try to make some of those dates. All right, guys, thanks.